Hello guys, welcome back, PK here. So in this video, I'm working on this interesting integral using Fourier series, so stay tuned. Okay, here's the question. The question is evaluate this integral from zero to infinity, sine of x over e to the power of x plus one dx. For this integral, I'll be using Fourier series. So first of all, I'll be rewriting this integral as now, integral from zero to infinity, and we have sine, still of x, and especially for this denominator. I'll be rewriting your denominator as now e to the power of x, that parenthesis 1, plus e to the power of negative x, and dx. Okay, then let's rewrite this integral again using the summation sign. So we have this integral from 0 to infinity, sine x over e to the power of x. And for this 1 over 1 plus e to the power of negative x part is going to be now summation. Okay, and then your n is from 0 to infinity. Then we should have this alternating sign, which is negative 1 to the power of n. And then we can multiply e to the power of negative n x, then we have dx. Okay. Okay, so if you keep rewriting this, right? So it is now then the same as integral of just the sine x. Integral from 0 to infinity, then we have sine x. And then now that times, okay, summation sine from n is equal to 0 to infinity. Then after this, we have this alternating sign, negative 1 to the power of now n. And then we can multiply now e to the power of negative parenthesis now n plus 1 times x. And then we have dx. Okay, so that's why now we are working on integral of now from 0 to infinity. And then we have sine of x. Okay, that times e to the power of negative n plus 1 x and dx. We need to work this integral out. So this would be the same as now we can rewrite this integral to be using this i term. So this is the same as 1 over 2i. Okay, and then that times integral from 0 to infinity. And then we have e to the power of ix. Okay, that minus n now plus 1x. Then after this, we have minus now e to the power of negative ix. Okay, then the same term minus n plus 1x, and then we have dx. Okay. Okay, so if you keep rewriting this integral, then it should be the same as this 1 over 2i still. Okay, then we have integral still from this 0 to infinity, and then your integral part, let's combine this. So the first term, it is e to the power of negative parenthesis, n plus now 1, and we have negative i, x minus this term 2. We can combine these terms on your exponent. e to the power of negative parenthesis n plus 1 minus i. Okay, and then a plus i, x, and we have dx. Okay, then we can easily evaluate this, right? So it is the same as then 1 over 2i, and then times this one is 1 over n plus 1, and then minus i. And then that minus, this term is 1 over, now n plus 1 plus i. Okay, so that's why if you combine these two fractions into one fraction, then this is the same as 1 over 2i. That times, okay, we have n plus 1, and then plus i. Minus this term, which is n plus 1 minus i. That divided by your denominator has to be n plus 1 squared plus 1. Which is going to be the same as now, 1 over n plus 1 squared plus 1. And one way to represent this integral is to use the series. So that's why now we worked on this integral to get this 1 over n plus 1 squared plus 1. So that's why we can represent this integral as a series. 
of the summation from n is equal to 0 to infinity, and then we had the alternating sign. Negative 1 to the power of n times this expression, 1 over n plus 1 squared plus 1. And if you rewrite this summation, maybe starting from n is equal to 1, we can pull this negative sign out. Negative summation from n is equal to 1 to infinity, then we should have negative 1 to the power of n times n over um, n squared plus 1. We can use the Fourier series to evaluate this. Okay, let's talk about Fourier series to evaluate this. So let your f of t, that is equal to e to the power of absolute value of the t um, from negative pi to pi. Okay, then this has to be first of all an even continuous function with a period of 2 pi. So that's why f of t is equal to Fourier series. That looks like your f of t. That is equal to the first term a0. Now plus summation from n is equal to 1 to infinity. And then the coefficient term a n. That times cosine of n now t. In order to compute this coefficient part, a n, right? Then what we need is going to be um, integral from negative, infinity, negative pi to pi. Then your integrand has to be f of now t. That times cosine and t dt. Okay, so this is then going to be equal to uh, 2 times integral from 0 to pi. Then we have f of t times cosine of and t dt. So that's why this integral has to be the same as then integral from 0 to, in, zero to pi. Then we have e to the power of t times e to the power of i times n times t. We have another term. Now then plus still e to the power of t, that times e to the power of negative i times n times t. And then we have dt. Okay, so if you evaluate this, then it looks like we have Okay, so e to the power of now, parenthesis 1 plus i n, okay, that times t, over um, 1 plus i n. Okay, that plus, the other term is going to be e to the power of parenthesis 1 minus i n t, okay, that over 1 minus i n, from 0 to pi. Okay, so that's why if you plug it in those numbers, then it should be evaluated to be um, negative 1 to the power of n. That times e to the power of pi. Okay, minus 1. And then you put the parenthesis. That times now 1 over your denominator part. 1 plus i n. Okay, and then plus 1 over i. 1 minus i n. Okay, so that's why if you keep calculating this, then it should be the same as now, then 2. 2 times, okay, we have this alternating sign. Negative 1 to the power of n. That times e to the power of pi minus 1, close your parenthesis, over your denominator has to be just the n squared plus 1 if you combine these two fractions. So that's why we should have n squared plus 1 on your denominator. So that's why we can specify your a0. a0 has to be 2 times e to the power of pi minus 1. That divided by uh, 2 pi. So we can cancel these twos out. So it is the same as now that e to the power of pi minus 1 over pi. Then if you keep your n to be now positive, then we can talk about this a n, the coefficient, coefficient part. It has to be the same as then um, 2 over pi. 2 over pi times now, this 
alternating sign term, negative 1 to the power of n times e to the power of pi, now minus 1. That divided by your denominator should be just n squared plus 1. Okay, based on this, let's talk about f of t, which is e to the power of absolute value of the t. Okay, so e to the power of absolute value of the t. This was f of t. Okay, then this is equal to the first term, e to the power of pi minus 1 over pi. Okay, that plus 2 over now pi. And then that times summation from n is equal to 1 to infinity. And then we have alternating sign, negative 1 to the power of n and e to the power of pi minus 1 and divided this by n squared plus 1. And then we have co cosine of n t. This is what we have. Okay. Then we need to talk about when your t is equal to 0 and when your t is equal to pi. So first of all, when your t is equal to 0, okay, then we should have 1 is now equal to e to the power of pi minus 1 over pi. Okay, that plus 2 over pi times summation from n is equal to 1 to infinity, and then we have negative 1 to the power of n, e to the power of now pi minus 1 over n squared plus 1, and that's it. And then when your t is equal to pi, and then uh, we should have now e to the power of pi. That is equal to the first term, e to the power of pi minus 1 over pi. And then that plus 2 over pi. And that times now summation from n is equal to 1 to infinity. And then we have alternating sign, negative 1 to the power of n times e to the power of pi minus 1 over denominator, n squared plus 1. And then make sure we need to multiply negative 1 to the power of now n, right? Okay, so now we can make some substitution. So I'll be calling this a. So let me call this a as summation from when n is equal to 1 to infinity, and then the first term. So that's 1 over n squared plus 1. Okay. And then I'll be calling this b as summation from n is equal to 1 to infinity, then the remaining term. It is just going to be negative 1 to the power of n over n squared plus 1. Then we can figure out what we need is now negative b. This is what we needed. Okay, so that's why now let's just talk about these two cases, when your t is equal to 0 and then when your t is equal to pi, right? So first, Using that a and b, when your t is now equal to 0, uh, then 1 has to be equal to e to the power of pi minus 1 over pi. Okay, that plus 2 over pi times e to the power of now pi. And then b minus now a. And similarly, we can talk about this when your t is equal to pi. Then we have e to the power of pi is equal to the first term, e to the power of pi minus 1 over pi. Okay, then plus 2 over pi. And that times now the other way around, e to the power of pi times a minus now b. Okay, then we need to solve for the b, right, by multiplying e to the power of pi on top and add them up. So if you go ahead and do this, then we should have... 2 times e to the power of now pi. That is now equal to uh, the first term, e to the power of pi minus 1 over now pi. That now times e to the power of pi uh, plus 1. And then plus 2 over pi times now e to the power of 2 pi. And then we have minus 1. That times now b. Okay, so that's why if you rewrite everything for this, then, okay, it should be the same as 
On the right-hand side, it's the same as now e to the power of 2 pi uh, minus 1 over pi. And then plus 2 over pi times e to the power of now 2 pi minus 1 times b. Okay, so that's why we can represent your b. So your b has to be the same as, okay, let's see. Your b is the same as pi times e to the power of pi. And that now over e to the power of 2 pi minus 1. Okay, and then at the same time, we need to subtract 1 over 2 from it. So that's why the expression that we are looking for was negative summation when your t is from 1 to infinity, 1 over n squared plus 1. Okay, so that expression, once again, um, negative summation from n is equal to 1 to infinity, 1 over um, n squared plus 1. This is going to be the same as then 1 over 2 because we're looking for negative of the b, right? So that's why your expression has to be positive 1 over 2. And then minus pi over now e to the power of pi minus e to the power of negative pi. This has to be the final answer for the question. Okay, so pretty interesting integral using Fourier series. So I'll be back with more, more questions like this sometime soon.